to get us started. So, itch to integration. I can start. Okay, so hopefully you're all aware that about every six months a new version of Moodle comes out uh, with lots of new features in it. So we've certainly seen a lot of exciting new features coming in 3.1. But I suspect one of you, two of you will have wondered how do new features actually come from an itch that someone wants to scratch to a feature that you actually find in the latest version of Moodle. So what I'm going to talk about now is a feature which one of our customers actually asked us to, um, to get in, which is actually there in Moodle 3 already. Uh, well, has arrived in Moodle 3, which was about adding a not in a group section to the groups overview page, as well as adding an extra bit of filtering so you could filter by not in a group. So the first thing that you have to do uh, if you want to get something into Moodle is you create a tracker issue. So in this case, I was the extra person who was asked to create that tracker issue. Um, and uh, you fill in the details about a quick, quick title for the issue that you want, and then hopefully a step-by-step -step description of it. In this case, it was also a screenshot to illustrate it, which I had on the previous slide. Uh, and then the next thing to do is to try and see if you can get a little bit of interest in the ticket. So you can post in the forums, you can kind of, uh, sometimes bigger features have something added to the Google Doc, uh, to the Moodle Docs even, uh, which uh, uh, describe the feature in a bit more detail. And then once people are interested in the issue, they can then go on it and they can vote for the issue uh, if they think it's a, an issue worth looking at. Uh, they can also watch the issue so they can get notified and updated about it. Uh, and obviously the more people who vote for an issue, the more likely it is that Moodle HQ are going to pick up that issue themselves and start trying to do some extra work on it. But anyway, the next thing that's going to happen is that someone's got to write the code for it. So it might be uh, Moodle HQ pick it up and decide to write the code themselves. It might be an independent developer comes on and uh, either gets paid or decides to do it themselves. Or you might contact one of the Moodle partners and ask them to do the development. Now in this case, because I was asked to um, create the ticket, I also went straight on to actually writing the code. Um, when you write in the code, you have to try and make sure that you're meeting the Moodle coding guidelines. So there's a whole load of rules about how you lay things out, where you should put the spaces, what you should use for the uh, variable names, uh, and you kind of have to try and make sure you match all those. And there's a pr plugin called Luke Code Checker which checks them for that for you. You also, it's a good idea to create some automated tests. Uh, some BHAT tests to test the front end and some PHP unit tests to test some of the internal functions. Uh, and obviously it's a good idea to make sure those tests pass because it's a bit embarrassing if you submit it and the tests don't all pass. Uh, once you've got the code finished, then the developer will usually put up a patch on GitHub uh, and then uh, put, uh, and then open, go on to the ticket uh, and, um, and open... Uh, uh, and ask for a peer review of that patch. Now, when you've opened a ticket and asked for a peer review, the first thing that happens is a whole load of automated tests kick in, and they do all the checks to see if you've laid everything out correctly, if you've been sensible with your variable names. Uh, and also, in the latest versions of Moodle, it's, uh, it can also run some of the automated tests immediately using the talk Travis uh, system. Uh, then, hopefully, someone will come on and they will actually peer review it themselves. Again, checking, manually checking things like the layout, checking to see if you've got language strings in there, making sure that you've got testing instructions, uh, making sure that it's actually a sensible thing that you're doing in the first place. And in this case, Dan came back to me and said, oh, could you change this, could you change that? So I went back, I made some changes, uh, I took out a couple of the magic uh, numbers that I had in there and replaced them with, de with definitions, and then I, I fixed a bit of a nasty bug in there, and then I re uh, returned it back uh, to uh, the is issue tracker. The next thing that happens is once the peer review's got taken place, then hopefully someone will then put it forward for integration, and then it's someone from Moodle HQ will come along and give it another check, uh, make sure that it is actually a sensible thing to get into Moodle Core. Uh, in this case, Eloy came out with some various bits of feedback, which went back and forth for a little while until the issue was ready. And then at that point, um, Andrew then uh, allowed it through into the integration repository. If you're lucky, by the end of the week, when something is in integration by the end of the week, it then gets into the new developer version of Moodle from the following week. 
For things which are bug fixes, often you might want to backport it so, uh, so that currently supported versions of Moodle, like 2.8, 2.9, get the same fix. Or if it's security, it will even go back to 2.7. Uh, if it's a new feature, then it will only appear in the next version. So in this case, that was Moodle 3. At the end of the week, uh, the integration branch, all the automated tests are run, so, uh, and also all the manual testing instructions that you typed in when you submitted it are gone through by a, particular, by a chosen tester. Uh, and hopefully, uh, everything will be okay, but if something's not okay, then it gets yanked out of integration, and you get another week or two to sort it out. All being well, uh, the ticket gets, uh, in, everything is integrated, the ticket gets closed, Eloy posts an amusing comment, or whoever's on integration that week posts an amusing comment, and the ticket is closed to indicate that everything is finished. Finally, um, the, if there's any Google documentation, uh, I keep saying Google, Moodle documentation needed, um, it, then, um, uh, then that's added. So in this case, Mary Cooch added some documentation to the Moodle docs about it, and then t updated the ticket to say that that had been done. And then finally, if you're really lucky, it'll be there in the new Moodle release. And actually in Moodle 3, if you look on the uh, features overview, there is just a little note on one of the sections which says that the groups overview screen now has the not in group feature, which I've just been demonstrating there. And I've got to think one more slide, which was just to say, this is from the Moodle developer docs, which is basically a flowchart showing exactly that process which I've whipped through in a very, very short space of time. Uh, so hopefully that kind of makes sense to you now.